Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And what you are looking at here is the very first ATSC 3.0 broadcast in all of Canada. Not only that, this is the first time I'm actually receiving an over the air broadcast that is in 4K. And believe it or not, this is not a commercial broadcast. This is an experimental license. And it's being held uh, by Humber College who's operating an experimental transmitter right now, broadcasting this over the Toronto area. And it's quite exciting to see, 3.0. I'll show you right here, this is it in HD. And we've got, got HD and we got 4K. My computer won't display 4K, but this TV will. This is a 4K TV. And wow, it looks stunning. I'm blown away at how great this looks, guys. It's really incredible to see 4K for the first time in a broadcast. Absolutely great, guys. So we're going to dive into this a little bit. I'm going to show you guys the experimental license and how I found this because it's not publicized because it's not commercial. And there we go, guys. Humber College. Really cool. So it all started down here in Patch Bay where everything comes together. And I was picking up a strange uh, unknown signal on the spectrum analyzer, and it was an off-air signal coming off my, uh, my off the antenna on the top of my tower. And it was centered around 558, mysterious signal. I had to find out what this was. Okay guys, this is the most powerful TV antenna ever made and uh, did some digging and uh, got pointed in the direction of uh, there was a test going on in the area of Toronto. And what I was using earlier to show you this signal was my HD home run. I purchased this actually two years ago and uh, because the very first ATSC 3.0 broadcast that I could receive was on the air over in uh, Buffalo, New York, started about two years ago. So I purchased one of these, and uh, this guy's great. It's got four tuners in it, so it can tune to not only the original ATSC 1.0, but the new technology, the next-gen television, which is ATSC 3.0, and 4K. And this is what I was actually using to stream to my computer and also to my TV because my TV, even though it's a 4K TV, does not have an ATSC 3.0 tuner in it. But that allows me to pick up 4K. Really cool, guys. Okay, did some research and actually found an experimental license for Toronto to broadcast. Comes from the Canadian government, the Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada. This is the equivalent of the FCC in Canada, and it was issued to Humber College to their B2C lab. And we'll skip over all the mumbo jumbo and we'll go right down to the interesting stuff, which is the frequency 557 megahertz, which is channel 28. They also are authorized to operate on 521 megahertz, which is channel 22. They can operate on both of those channels, according to this license. They can modulate at six megahertz and they can operate up to 781.7 watts ERP. So that is interesting to see. They have two channels. Uh, channel 22 is also used by a pirate station in Toronto. So hopefully that won't be an issue and maybe why they're not using channel 22. So let's move on, uh, rabbit ears. Okay, this gets interesting because I do band scans for rabbit ears. And as you can see on RF channel 28, we are getting a very strong signal, but band scan does not log this channel. I wonder why. So I contacted the webmaster Mark over at uh, rabbit ears and uh, he gave me this response, uh, which was interesting. He said there's no uh, identification information that the server can use. The server depends on a combination of channel number and one or two other values, the TSID or the PSIP. 
there's no TSID in the database for it. And I bet they're not broadcasting a valid TSID anyway, since it's experimental, which is true. They are not a commercial station. They are an experimental station. So they probably, and it's Canada. So different, uh, different regulations here. As for the PSIP, none of the streams are labeled VBA257, which is what their license is. That's their license number or call sign. So their server can't associate it. And uh, he says there is maybe a walk around for it, but I don't think he's going to be bothered with that. Anyways, uh, there is an interesting video. I did, uh, I did Google uh, VBA257, and I found one other guy on YouTube that was inquisitive about this particular uh, signal. Across this ATSC 3.0 transmission, this is the weirdest thing. I have no idea where this is coming from. It's showing up on RF channel 28 as HUMB1, HUMB2, and HUMBAO. And they're using QPSK with a 715 code rate. And this is actually incredibly robust for using their entire 6 megahertz channel. I can actually calculate what the minimum SNR would be for this. So they're using QPSK with a code rate. So moving on uh, back to rabbit ears. The license is actually right there. It says it's a test. And there's VBA257. And it shows 20, 22 or 28, which is what they could be using. And uh, there is their technical data. And it shows that they have three different transmitter sites which is also really interesting because this is uh, something that 3.0 3 can do. It's kind of like cellular. You can have multiple transmitters in a given area all operating on the same frequency, which can help fill in uh, where there might be uh, a black hole or an area that might be have some terrain around it that's blocking the signal. You can put in kind of like a repeater, but it's not because it's actually the same signal being transmitted on the same frequency, but they do it through a method of some type of time domain, um, time domain multiplexing. So yeah, it's really interesting, a uh, very advanced technology, uh, very cool to see. So, and here's the uh, contour map and there's the three different transmitter locations. One's down by the lake and the other two are further north, there's Humber. So it's part of the campus up there. And uh, yeah, so let's go over and look at Humber's uh, actual website. Here we go, they actually have it uh, on their research. Okay, so it's the uh, Humber College Broadcast Broadband Convergence B2C Lab, the first of its kind in North America. Humber College has established Canada's first broadcast broadband convergence B2C lab to explore both next-gen television and data delivery applications enabled by the new Advanced Television Systems Committee, ATSC, 3.0 Television Broadcast Standard. The new 3.0 standard is set to replace the current ATSC 1.0 standard in North America. Apparently, this was mandated by the FCC by 2027. But we'll have to see. It's probably going to get extended as, you know, trust me. Uh, let's go down and let's take a look at these videos they have here. This is an opportunity for those of us who've been working on a new transmission standard for broadcasting to educate and to bring the findings of that new technology to Canada. Okay, this is quite interesting to me, the uh, type of antenna they're using here. This antenna is circular polarized. This is why it's mounted sideways on the, uh, this antenna is designed actually uh, to be side mounted because it's typically used for FM radio stations and they will have a bank of them on the side of a tower stacked to uh, increase gain. So, okay, that's interesting to see that ATSC 3.0 or maybe this type of 3.0 that they're doing, experimenting with, they've decided to go with the circular polarization. 
to Canada. This is a great opportunity here at Humber College to do exactly that. We, broadcasters, live in a world of the global standard of Wi-Fi, the global standard of internet delivery, and the global standard of LTE 5G. These are all major IP data delivery networks. And what ATSC 3.0 is here to do is to bring another internet delivery network to the world. Cell phone progress from what? Let's go over and look at the other video here. Television broadcasters are leading the way with a new system that will merge the capabilities of over-the-air broadcasting with the internet. Two decades ago, the Advanced Television Systems Committee celebrated the FCC's adoption of the first all-digital over-the-air TV standard. It offered pristine, high-definition video delivered in the same 6 megahertz channel once needed for black and white, and then color TV. Now broadcasters are evolving to meet the needs of today's viewers and advertisers. This next-generation broadcast platform merges the best capabilities of over-the-air and broadband viewing. The result is a convergence of the most popular method of watching live events with the variety of programming available online. ATSC 3.0 is designed from the ground up to be all of those things. A next generation transmission system that can deliver 4K Ultra HD images with high dynamic range, plus interactive features and multi-channel immersive audio. ATSC 3.0 is the world's first broadcast standard built on an internet protocol backbone. This offers the advantage of both broadcast and broadband. Designed to integrate with internet delivered content, ATSC 3.0 will present viewers with more streams, more choices, more channels, and more flexibility. The system takes advantage of new technology with advanced video and audio compression and more robust modulation. Responding to the needs of broadcasters... Well, that's really great. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Congratulations to Humber College. Uh, this is really amazing to see in Canada, right here in Toronto, uh, such research uh, taking place. It's really exciting, and uh, congratulations to everybody involved. Okay, guys, thanks very much. This is an opportunity for those of us who have been working on a new transmission standard for broadcasting to educate and to bring the findings of that new technology to Canada. This is a great opportunity here at Humber College to do exactly that.